Hey everybody, it's Brad, and today we're going to learn to use some of the features uh, that are built into Embroidery Works every day. Um, in this video, we're going to learn to import our own custom fonts uh, into the program so that we can use them and just type the letters in and have the, the letters come up. So what you'll need for this is uh, a, a font that is one that you bought, um, and it, it, any brand will work, uh, as long as they're individual embroidery designs that you would normally have to bring in one at a time. Uh, and if you've ever done that before, buy a font and then realize that you have to bring the letters in one at a time. You can't just type it out. Um, it's pretty annoying to, to have to do that because then you have to line everything up on the line yourself. And if you want them on an arc, basically forget about it because it's such a pain to try and get designs to do that. Um, so this is going to make that a lot easier uh, to use those extra fonts. Like maybe, you know, you've got some Dakota ones or amazing designs or once you download it off of Embroidery Library or whatever, um, any of those fonts will work with uh, this technique. So first thing we're going to do is open up Embroidery Works. I'm going to click on my icon. Uh, Embroidery Works opens up. Um, and uh, now we are going to go up to Utility. Utility. Uh, it's on this bar here. I hover my mouse over it. A little drop-down menu comes up. And I've got all these different choices here. Uh, we're going to go down to here where it says import font. And you're going to left click on import font. Okay, import font. Would you like to begin importing a font? Well, yes. That's why I clicked on that. So we're going to click yes. And what it does is it opens up this little file tree here. And what you need to know at this point is you need to know the path uh, of where your designs are. So if you've got them on a CD, you would need to look for your CD drive in this file tree here, which um, in this case on my computer it's down here at the bottom uh, CD drive J um, but my designs are not on a CD my designs are actually on my hard drive in my storage drive which is the I drive so here it says storage 2 I um, that's where my design is but yours is going to be wherever your designs are stored so you have to know where they are I can't help you with that you've got to know where they are uh, but the way this little file tree thingy works is you've got pluses and minus signs next to stuff if it's got a plus sign next to it that means there's more stuff inside that drive. So this plus sign next to storage 2i, if I click it, it expands and shows me the different folders that are in the i drive. Okay. Um, so if there's a minus sign next to it, that means you can collapse it. So if I click on the minus sign, it collapses it. And that way you don't see everything on your computer at once. So uh, anyway, mine's on i drive, mine's in i drive, and then a folder called digitizing images, and then a folder called... Embroidery Works Advanced Alphabet, I made that folder name just because this was a font that I had laying around somewhere, and I just, you know, renamed the folder so I'd remember what it was. But yours is going to be called, you know, whatever it's called. Um, so, you know, if it's Dakota Renaissance Alphabet, it'll say Dakota Renaissance Alphabet, uh, or, or what have you. So you, you pick the folder where the designs are, and then they show up in this little navigator here on the side. And you can look through and see what's all there. If you, if you see in here, this, this font only has capital letters. So I've only got 26 designs in here, and they're all capital letters. If this font had lowercase letters with it too, I would see them in this folder. And some of them do, some of them don't. Um, in my experience, the majority of them only have capital letters, and that's the type of font we're doing today. Um, but I'm going to show you how to do one that has lowercase letters too. So when you're satisfied that this is, in fact, the font that you're trying to import, you need to go and select all of these things at once, which you could do by, you know, holding down the control key and clicking each one, blah, blah, blah. We're not going to do that. We're going to hit this select all button here. Right here, we're just going to left click select all. It selects all my letters. They're all selected. Just show, showing you, you don't have to scroll down and look. They will all be selected. And then when they're all selected, you're going to left click on import designs. So right here where it says import, you hover your mouse over it, it says import designs. Left click on that one time. And there it has now imported these letters into my field here. All right. Now, they're not assigned to any keys yet, though. So if I save this font, it wouldn't really have any information because the, the computer needs to know what key corresponds to which one of these letters. Um, it can't just look at them and tell. It has to be told. So you want to make sure that the letter that you have selected is the first letter. So if you accidentally were clicking around or just clicking around for fun, you need to go and make sure you have the A selected. And the one that's selected is going to have two little lines on either side. 
um, and well we can actually go in and adjust the um, the placement of the design or of the of the letter on the line by moving this up and down I'm clicking and holding so if you had a font where these came up and like say this the a looked like it was below the line some of them you know the letters are different sizes they don't all come to the to the same part of the line you can actually go in and adjust where the, each letter is going to fall and then you can also adjust the spacing between each letter and the word spacing but these we can actually adjust later so you really don't need to adjust these so you make sure that you have the a selected um, and once you do your first capital letter a you're going to map this button right here, capital letter A to Z. So we see this capital letter A to Z, you're going to left click that one time. Okay, and it doesn't look like it did much, right? But now, if you select any of these letters, and we look in here where it says letter, it actually says the letter. So T, S, and so on and so forth, whereas before it just said a random series of numbers. Um, so that's how we know that that took. Um, now for this particular font, that's it, we're done. We would just hit save font and we would be finished. Um, if you, however, had one that had upper and lower case characters, you would do the upper case. Well, actually there's two ways to do it. You would do the upper case and then scroll to the end and you would have lowercase letters starting here. You would click on the first lowercase letter, which is gonna be an A, and then you click this lowercase A to Z. Or if you knew all along that you had upper and lower case and they were all in a line ABCD all the way to Z and then ABCD all the way to Z in lowercase you would be able to actually just hit this one where it maps the upper and lower case all at once and then um, if you have numbers you can also map the numbers so you start with zero click on the zero hit this button and it maps the numbers that way too um, and the reason they let you do this different ways is depending on how the files are named you may not have the capital letters and then the lowercase letters and then the numbers. You may have the capital letters and then the numbers and then the lowercase letters, in which case you would have to map first the uppercase, then the numbers, then the lowercase. Okay, so anyway, this, this font is all capital, so we're going to leave it like this. Um, and then um, I can type in a name here if I want. So instead of EmbroiderWorks Advanced Alphabet, which was just the name of the folder they were in, I'm going to call them Software Club Font. <laughs> It doesn't matter what you call it, just so you know what it is. Okay, when, when you're satisfied with the name, then you're done. You're just going to hit Save Font. This button here, Add Designs, would let you add any other designs. Maybe you wanted to, to, to map um, some other font to the lowercase for some reason. You could actually do this and hit Add Designs and, uh, and map in more, um, more, more letters uh, if you wanted to. Anyway, you just hit Save Font. That's it. Now it takes you back to this screen here, uh, but we can just close. And now when we go bring up our lettering tool here, create letters, we have in our list of fonts a font called Software Club Font. And I can type any capital letters in and they'll come up. There we go. Now I can do all the same stuff to these. I can slant them. I can change the spacing. Um, I can, uh, you know, change, uh, put them on a curve if I want. So much more convenient than bringing each one of these letters in individually. Uh, so you can do that with all your fonts and then you basically have as many fonts as you care to buy that are just built right into the program. Uh, and it's really convenient and quite cool. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.